do you see yourself learning 3D, 3D design software? Um, oh, wow, yeah. Do you think you would be happy with a completely 3D printed replica? Yeah, sure. Sure. That's a tricky question to answer in the abstract, because again, like, I'm looking for an experience. And the question is, you know, that experience has both an aesthetic look, but there's also a weight and a heft and a feeling. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I've run a bunch of prints through the Form 3L and I'm my mind is kind of blown by some of the things it can do. And I'm a little annoyed by some of the things that take way more time than I thought they would. But absolutely, uh, there is a fully 3D printed prop replica in my, in my future. Um, He's asking, would all of my, like the stock and trigger of the Ambin Blaster, would all of my builds need an element or two that were machined or handcrafted? It, I can never say never. It's possible, but maybe not. But maybe I'll have stuff printed out of metal. But your first question is the most interesting. Do I see myself learning 3D design software? Yes. And I've, in fact, purchased some 3D software. Um, and I have not yet started to teach it to myself. Um, one reason is because my laptop is coughing up blood right now, uh, and I'm planning on getting a new one, but I'm waiting for the announcements for the next ones and all that. Yeah, you know, you know, I've just got to sit tight because my laptop, every time I turn it up, it goes, <laughs> and I'm like reaching the limit of my hard drive, which is shocking because it's two terabytes and it's, it's just all photos. But yeah. It is time for me to learn some 3D software um, and go past Tinkercad, and I will. And I, that journey will be part of what we cover here on Tested because it's time. Back when I was at ILM, I used 3D software all the time. I did all of the laser cutting in AutoCAD 2D, but we used Rhino constantly. And Rhino was fantastic. I mean, it had some severe limitations back then compared to AutoCAD. But where it was really fantastic was in building stuff and then being able to place the stuff you were building in orientation to each other and then to be able to pull stuff and unwrap it. That's what I mostly used Rhino for back then. But it's so funny. Like, I, you can use a piece of complicated software like Rhino professionally for months and still not really know the program. I used Illustrator for a year. And I still have no idea how to use Illustrator. And I used it professionally. Like I was making, generating output files for it, for like national packaging campaigns. And still Illustrator was, I was like figuring it out as I went. And if you asked me to open Illustrator now, I would be completely, completely mystified. Um, but yeah, it's time for me to learn some 3D, some 3D software. Um, let's see here. Um, ben Campbell wants to know, would I ever attempt to build a one-to-one -one movie vehicle replica? Yeah, totally. Uh, and it would be either Ray's vehicle, that beautiful like tractor with the, with the, with the ape hangers on it, uh, or a land speeder. It would be one of those two things. I love the lens beater. And to be perfectly fair, it's not that complicated of a build. Don't I, I don't mean to denigrate anyone that's built them because it's a big object and big objects are a pain in the ass and laborious, but it's not a technically it's not super technically complex. Uh, it's just a ton of detail and like it's a big thing. But yeah, I've always wanted to like buy an old VW and then just like build a, a, a build a lens beater on top of it. But at the same time, I love the vehicle Ray drives in uh, Force Awakens. That thing is fantastic. Um, I still may. Like, you know, if uh, if some car company wanted me to build whatever car I wanted, I'd say Land Speeder. <laughs> we will see. Um, I think I've got time for one more. Oh, 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 here we go. Uh, let's see here. Ah, let's see. Um, John O wants to know, are there any tips that you have on converting a toy bowcaster to look more like the real thing? 
The one I got my wife is all bright colors, yellows, greens, blues, not black or brown like the movies. Yes, absolutely. So let's say you took your uh, toy bowcaster and it's all those bright colors. Um, the first thing I would do is I would see how take apartable it is. Um, and in taking it apart, does it have features that you want to maintain? Like is it a Nerf rifle and you want it to still be able to shoot Nerf darts? Well, you just gotta be careful about how you take it apart, take pictures of the disassembly so you'll know how it goes back together. Once you have it apart, yeah, I do have a couple of really easy, easy tips for doing this really fast and well. Um, matte black spray paint, first off, take that, take that bowcaster apart, paint the whole thing matte black, uh, probably take like two or three passes to get it right. Um, if it has a barrel, that's a great place to hold it, like to chuck it in a vise on a, on a stick, and then you can spin it around and make sure you get all the parts. Once it is fully dry, um, I would then hit it with the least expensive weathering tool I know of, which is a silver Sharpie. Uh, and with a silver Sharpie, what you can do, you want to cut to a close up, and I can just do it a little bit right here. So, here is the main arm of my bow caster and I take a silver Sharpie. And if I, if I go over the edge, what I end up doing is I'm, I end up making it look like paint has chipped off the edge. And maybe this isn't fully communicating here um, in this, in this live stream simply because oh, here I can do this here. Ah, there you go. So basically anytime you pull up a detail, and you can see I'm like using my hand right after while the while the marker is still wet to, to move the paint around. Anytime you hit a high edge with silver, it just your eye ends up telling you telling yourself the story that it has been painted and the paint's been chipped off because it's been weathered and it makes it feel like a more realistic object. And if you didn't feel like you had any real aesthetic chops, you could simply take a bright Sharpie and kind of run it along the edges and sort of munge it in and run along all the edges and it would look terrific when you're done. Um, further things you could do, you could take a, a, a wet wash of some burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw umber, raw sienna, any of those four acrylic paints, I would choose two, a light and a dark. Uh, and you do a wash pass over the matte black and the uh, silver Sharpie uh, and then keep pulling that off. Put it on, pull it off, put it on, pull it off. Eventually you'll end up with something that looks like it's been sitting in the junkyard for 20 years, which is effectively the aesthetic of the entire Rebel Legion. <laughs> um, it's also a really, really fun project to do. Uh, <clears throat> I think that kind of weathering is is some of the most accessible and the highest yield, like do that with a kid and they'll be amazed at how realistically beat up something can look with just a couple of hours of, of elbow grease. That's a terrific question, Jono. Thank you. Um, Jack Mead, Jack Meads. Um, are there any Star Wars prequel pieces that you've seen come up in auctions that you know you either made or helped make? I uh, no. no, but that's also because I worked on mostly um, sets and ships, set extensions and ships. And that kind of stuff doesn't frequently leave the archives for auction. Um, the stuff that comes up at auction are costume pieces and prop pieces. And that absolutely was not what we did at Industrial Light Magic. That was usually done at the studios, either in Pinewood or Australia. Um, so no, I have never seen one of the things that I have built in the Star Wars universe come up at auction. I have seen Galaxy Quest pieces that I built come up at auction. In fact, someone just reached out to me and asked if uh, if it really was something that I worked on. And I said, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us here at Tested, one of the best ways you can do it is through a Tested membership. And there's a link below as to the various levels of tested membership, but it's so much more than just exclusive videos. There are exclusive videos, but there are also live stream Q and A's. And the thing that I love most about the tested members is the interactivity, uh, the wonderful communication between not just me and the tested members, but our whole tested team. Every single day, it feels more and more like a community just devoted to the joys of making things. So join yourself up and become one of us.